So, um, welcome today. I'm having Senada Shalosh-Shabic from the as a Senior Research Associate of the Institute for Development and International Relations uh, today. So, Senada, um, in our series we're talking uh, on the consequences uh, of the COVID-19 and government responses across the Western Balkans and the wider region. So um, let me start by asking you, because Croatia has uh, the EU presidency uh, these months for the first time. Um, and of course, it was supposed to be a quite different presidency than the one it's turned out. Um, so what does it mean for, um, for the Western Balkans, which was supposed to be one of the priority areas of the Croatian presidency and also the summit, which was uh, or foreseen uh, to be uh, bringing in the Western Balkans or kind of accelerating the accession process and which is now reduced to an online uh, event. So what does that mean for the agenda of the Croatian presidency? Well, hi, Florian and everybody who's watching. It's uh, thank you for the invitation. And um, uh, I'm happy uh, to be uh, in this online forum with you. Um, regarding the presidency uh, and the enlargement, um, Croatia, I think, would not have been able to achieve much without the uh, COVID crisis. Uh, with the crisis uh, in place, as you said, the crown of the presidency was supposed to be the May summit, which next week is going to be held in the online forum, and I think is held only to show that things go um, will go as usual but without uh, i think we shouldn't expect uh, much from it in terms of any breakthroughs regarding uh, the uh, uh, further enlargement or um, speedier accession of the countries croatia i think at the same time will uh, um, um, record that during its presidency north macedonia joined nato that albania and macedonia uh, got green lights to start negotiations but uh, i think this is the maximum that we can expect mm. so yeah i mean uh, as you pointed out of course there have been these big successes which happened at the early days of the crisis and which happened despite of it or because of it, but certainly Croatia can, can put it uh, as a success. Um, Croatia has, a, uh, has, the government has taken much less rigid measures than um, many of its neighboring countries uh, when it comes to dealing with, uh, with the pandemic. I mean, unlike Serbia or Bosnia-Herzegovina, there have been no uh, curfews and no kind of mm -hmm. as rigid kind of long-term uh, restrictions of people staying indoors. Um, how how would you how would you assess the overall impact and how the, how the government has been dealing with this crisis in Croatia? Uh, well, I have to say that uh, uh, either we uh, we are very lucky or uh, we have introduced measures that uh, managed to control for uh, the occurrence of, of uh, infections. So they have been able to identify clusters. Uh, at least this is the explanation uh, very soon. Uh, and although we did not have effective measures, so at least not visible um, from um, 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 or they started to be visible only in mid-March. Uh, already as of late February, Croatia has been introducing restrictions on border crossings and um, uh, controlling for uh, entrance of uh, passengers um, and uh, even testing them and uh, uh, getting their uh, history of travel. Uh, and they were able to go back also to some of the cases and uh, isolate them later on uh, when the crisis uh, exploded. What I want to say is that it seems, at least this is the, um, uh, the perception or the impression that we get, that uh, uh, professionals were put in charge and we see uh, less politicians and more uh, medical doctors and uh, other experts um, handling the crisis and talking to the audience. Um, and I think we, we, uh, we can, at least in this first phase, uh, we can say that we have emerged from the crisis quite uh, uh, easily or quite well compared to others or compared what could have been uh, were not these measures these measures introduced so um, I think one of the reasons why the government wants to go for early elections this July is to um, um, capitalize on the success 
uh, and use also the summer months and the summer period where more relaxation and more uh, uh, movement will be allowed and probably and hopefully less uh, infections will be detected uh, in order to uh, uh, hopefully for them at least win the elections. They are scheduled for the fall of this year and uh, we may expect new lockdowns or changes as uh, the summer winds down. And of course, I mean, the biggest concern in countries like Croatia or Montenegro is, of course, tourism, because, I mean, that's such a large part of the GDP, where presumably this is the biggest worry for the economy now about how to um, reduce the adverse effect on the, on the economy, uh, considering the uncertain summer holidays, right, for many European travelers. We have had for years uh, experts warning that mono uh, industry like tourism that Croatia relies on uh, is a recipe for disaster. And I think this crisis will only very, very, uh, uh, will be a stark reminder and uh, a message that this can't go on as, as uh, we have been um, practicing in the last decade. 25, uh, well, 20% certainly, and some say even a quarter of Croatian budget comes from tourism. And the projection now is for 9% drop um, in growth for this year, but I think it's, it will be more because um, despite the fact that they, uh, the government now announces opening of borders and easing of uh, movement and uh, hotels are reopening, um, people, uh, and tourists won't come, or at least they certainly won't come in numbers that they are hoping for. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Um, let's turn to Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is the country you're also mostly researching and working on. Um, the, also, Bosnia has been less affected than some other countries relatively. Um, but how is your assessment of the, of the, you know, the kind of environment in which the, 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 the pandemic hit Bosnia, which has been, of course, in, in perpetual crisis in a certain way for, for many years? Has it worsened the crisis in Bosnia or has it in a certain way helped um, the country to, to, to kind of function uh, in this moment? Because it seems to have been able to impose measures across the country, um, which at least didn't lead it to, 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 to uh, a serious outbreak. So in a certain way, it was able to, to step up to some degree. So how do you, how do you, how do you view the situation in Bosnia? Well, uh, certainly um, Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, what could have been expected looking from the outside and knowing how uh, dysfunctional uh, the system is, uh, has so far gone through the crisis uh, quite well. Uh, people, what we see, are observing, uh, and in this case, uh, much more extreme measures than in Croatia in terms of curfews and uh, um, restriction of movement and uh, isolation. Uh, and I think largely to the fact that exactly they know they can't count on the healthcare system. And therefore, they are trying to um, uh, ensure that they themselves protect themselves as much as they can, knowing that institutions um, are weak or uh, problems that may arise in terms of competencies. That is always an eternal question when it comes to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, which hospital you belong to? Can you go to a different hospital if you are not in, in the canton or in, in different municipality in Republika Srpska? Uh, whether the uh, equipment that is there is um, um, modern and uh, uh, adequate, whether the um, professional uh, staff is attentive. So plenty of questions that uh, luckily we haven't seen discussed much. We have uh, uh, seen in the last few days the cases of um, severe corruption indications and uh, just the fact that in um, uh, this situation of humanitarian basically crisis and health crisis, we still have um, um, people in power who can exploit uh, public uh, funds and uh, donations for their enrichment. Um, and if nothing happens, then it only shows the gravity or the, the lack of um, the lack of ability of citizens to change uh, anything. News stories are full of these articles, but I fear nothing will happen in the end. That there will be a cover-up and uh, we won't know what happened and we will only know that some people again managed to use the system for their own uh, enrichment. 
so I mean, is that uh, for I already hear from your answer a little bit is is you know kind of that Bosnia both is kind of managing more than some people might expect uh, on one side, but at the same time the kind of structural problems which Bosnia has, uh, like uh, endemic corruption, state capture, and so on. Uh, are persisting, of course, as we've seen those reports with uh, purchase of, of ventilators and other and other uh, issues, um, that they are apparently uh, persisting, maybe even ex 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 you know, for, ex accentuated by the crisis because uh, it's more visible now. But uh, basically, it's business as usual, and and so maybe do you expect that that will that you know you're already implying that it might not lead to any change and that basically bosnia herzegovina will return to 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 where it stood before or do you see this also maybe a turning point for the country in a, in a certain way well every uh, story of this kind or every um, awareness raising campaign um shows uh, or uh, adds to adds to um, the the knowledge and uh, hopefully will of people to make some change but um the deep structural problems that, that you mentioned in terms, for example, of election fraud. I mean, we, we can, even now, there are series uh, of studies showing that um, election fraud does happen in Bosnia and Herzegovina in terms of uh, manipulation of all kinds. And uh, in, um, if, if we don't use elections as a way to change things, then we are left with questions, what else is on our uh, menu? And protests as one form of democratic disobedience or civil uh, unrest have been tried uh, for issues that were also important to Bosnian citizens, but they were also crushed by, uh, by powerful politicians because fear is one of the most powerful tools to uh, use if you are in power against those who may threaten your uh, power. And in these conditions, Bosnia having been a traumatized society per se, uh, going through, through uh, the war and everything that has happened afterwards, and now in this health uh, uh, crisis or the virus crisis, uh, people are fearful. And as much as they may be aware of the dysfunctionality of the uh, um, criminal uh, activities, um, the, the sense of uh, uh, disempowerment, the sense of the lack of agency, the sense of um, uh, being left alone or not having the ability, capacity and um, um, uh, mass uh, to, of people to make a change, I think is, uh, is very powerful. Was is very, very fragmented society. And if you try to make any issue cross-ethnic or try to make it a civic cause which affects everybody, every, citizens, be, every citizen, be it education, infrastructure, health, uh, climate, so, uh, environmental protection, uh, politicians so far have managed to use it for their own purposes, making it ethnic issue and making it uh, uh, a Serbian issue against Bosniak agenda or Croat against Serb and so on. Uh, as long as we have the ability of the uh, politicians or whoever uses uh, ethnicity as the driving force, as uh, um, 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 tool to um, uh, control for political processes, we won't have um, cross-cutting uh, issues that bind citizens together. And this is what we need if you want to make the country functional, uh, stable and prosperous. Yeah. Um, I mean, people have often noted that in the time of crisis, the state has become stronger. I mean, you know, because of course, all of a sudden the state has to provide services, it, it imposes order. Um, so in a certain way, it's been reinforcing state structures over others. But I guess mm -hmm. in Bosnia, you know, would you say it's the entities which have, because of course, they are the main drivers of public health policies rather than the state of Bosnia-Herzegovina. So who do you see as the main, in a certain way, who's been strengthened by this dynamic of crisis response uh, in Bosnia? Or and I guess in the Federation, it's even more complicated. Who, who got stronger, the cantons, the, uh, the, the Federation? Or who do you see in a certain way emerging as the stronger actor, which in other places might be the, the country versus international organizations or other? Levels. Yes, this is a very good point. After a um, uh, long debate of the uh, withering state, I think we are back in this situation of the standing that um, 
uh, we need strong, we need uh, institutions and we need states to function and especially in times of crisis. Um, but also when it comes to uh, some policy changes that I think we will uh, understand that you have to change in terms of economy, climate, and so on. But this is this is another issue. In, when, um, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, what uh, some people are now uh, more aware of is the fact that uh, the complexity of the system, having 14 governments for a country of three million people, is uh, such a drain of resources that um, the state has to exist, but it has to exist on different uh, uh, foundation, on different framework has to be introduced. Uh, the state level is not visible. And here and there, you see members of the presidency taking photos with donated uh, goods and uh, uh, sometimes at the airport waiting for, for the airplane to land uh, with what is coming. Otherwise, you don't see them. Entities, yes, to an extent, can source in the federation. And uh, what we also see is that people are realizing the local level. The uh, mayors are complaining that they are not getting enough assistance, but who the citizens turn to if not their mayors or people who are closest to them when they need solution for their problems. So I think what we need and what would be good outcome of this whole uh, thing is that people become aware that their locality, that municipality, city, town, village, where they live, is a place where they can build politics, that they can have more organic growth of politics, and that they can feed it into a system that will better reflect their interests in the future. And uh, this is one of the hopes that we can, uh, that we can nurture um, uh, in the future. Mm. Yes. Last question, Senada, would be for you. Also, I'm pretty curious, you know, how has, how has your life as a researcher in a, in a, in a research institute and think tank in, in Croatia, how has that been disrupted by, your, by, by, by the whole, uh, you know, pandemic and the lockdown? So how is your work different now than it was and than you anticipated your March, April, Mays to be like? Uh, it is very different as uh, with everybody, but we have additional uh, element and that is the earthquake that we had on the 22nd of March and which was uh, slightly repeated last week. Uh, and this is what is what actually made people more uh, fearful and uh, uh, more traumatized, I would say. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, work organization, uh, as a result of the earthquake, we can go back to uh, our building uh, and uh, it, will, it will last for months, probably at the end of this year, maybe next year. So the lockdown or the new working environments will continue even when we have the lifting uh, of uh, restrictions and the uh, um, the liberty of movement uh, and uh, in our case uh, the combination of the earthquake and uh, uh, COVID crisis has really impacted a uh, lot uh, social relations but also our work environment. Well, uh, but we are adapting, we are adapting I think smoothly uh, yes. and it, uh, this, uh, surprisingly for me surprisingly well. Yes, we're all, we're all learning, we have a steep learning curve and we're all trying to cope as we can. Um, but Sonata, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us and talking to me today. Thank you, Florian. All the best.